I have insurance and so I don't need to focus on anything else other than just my physical well-being because a bike is completely replaceable and the fact that you have insurance and that you're protected and you're covered all you need to do is focus on yourself and getting yourself better like I'm gonna try and I'm gonna take risks and I'm gonna take chances because why else why would you not right I'm Alicia Speak I'm 37 I'm a full-time lawyer but I'm also a cyclist for Cycle Team London <laughs> put it's Rob a very slick end. presentation. Yeah. Working Rob's out not going to say much anyway. As we walk up, um, Rob's only here as a sort of because the two of us. Rob, just <laughs> Rob's here for the glamour. Yeah. We're all here to launch a very special new book. I'll sit down because you boys are as well. Okay. Um, Sorry. The Road Book 2019, ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this a work of beauty a work of an incredible amount of work, 899 pages of 29 cycling, yeah, exactly, of 2019 cycling embodied in this. If there's anything that happened in the last year in cycling and it's not in here, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. We will be talking about it in just a moment, else. but on the front it says, edited by Ned Bolting, because it was. Ned can't be here today, but he has sent a little video explaining just how all of this has come about involved in a whole bunch of different things um, in cycling, most of which I've absolutely loved, uh, a few of which have given me great pleasure and some of which have given me a great deal of pride. But nothing in a way comes close to what a very small team of people um, have managed to achieve in producing now the second annual edition of the Roadbook. Um, this book's going to be around for many, many years to come. It's up and running, it's established and uh, if anything I think that we've managed to improve on last year's book. Here we are, 920 pages of race reports, infographics, essays, content, poems this year, um, beautiful photography. Um, the most memorable racing year um, for decades really has come to an end and there is no better way of recording it in its infinite detail uh, than by investing in this book and completing your collection if you can by adding the 2018 edition to it. Uh, the road book for 2019, I'm very pleased to say, is launched. And if I had a tiny little bottle of champagne, I would swing it against the hull of this book and send it on its way. Oh, thank you, Ned. I can't, I can't hear you, you know. Where is Ned? Ned's in Amsterdam. He's, he's behind the screen. It. <laughs> He's at the, um, and I hate to contradict him because it, this is all of his hard work, but it is 899 pages, which I think is enough. We don't really miss those 21 extra pages that, don't, that aren't there. Um, but this is truly, for me, a thing of absolute beauty, and it gives me incredible satisfaction. And I'm not quite sure why, but if, you're, if you look at life and you look at statistics in the same way that I do, you will absolutely love it. Everything is in here. We've got every single race of the year. Um, I'm looking at the moment at the Route Adélie de Vitré. Oh, yeah. Who knows about that one? There you go, it's in here. We've got the stage results of everything from uh, Vuelta al País Basco, um, short sort of stage report. We've got the weather on the day, the wind direction, the profile of the stage, who was in the breakaway, GC, King of the Mountains, points, uh, bonuses, I mean, it's just anything that you want to know about the year. And I just feel that that fills something that, that I don't know, like I said, it gives me incredible satisfaction. Now, Matt, you have, we also have chapters um, in the road book as well, and you've written a chapter. Oh, um, I've written a few. You've written a few chapters. Oh, ah, yes. Um, tell us about your contribution to the road book, how it came about, why. Uh, well, f first of all, it's really good. <laughs> Obviously. And, um, the book or your chapters? No, no, just my chapters. The rest <laughs> of it I haven't really. He hasn't read yeah. any of the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Other no. bits are good because I wrote a chapter. No, 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 but there's, there is, as you say, there's a kind of simplicity about it. I'll tell you how utterly obvious and yet so obvious that you wouldn't think. So we do this thing, we did it last year and we do it this year and it is um, how I won the dot, dot, dot. So um, last year, I mean, amazingly, we had Geraint Thomas, how I won the Tour de France, mm -hmm. Chris Froome, how I won the Tour d'Italia and I can't remember quite what. And um, I... Um, uh, was working at the Giro d'Italia, uh, Giro d'Italia, and I was asked if I'd uh, be Richard Carapaz's interpreter, which I was, which is an incredible adventure, as you can imagine. And um, so I called up Ned and said, "Listen, um, 
you know, How I Won the Duel by Richard Carapaz, it's all, you know, we can do that straightforward. So he said, do. And I sat down with Richard, and um, it's just the most obvious thing, isn't it? How I won the Giro d'Italia. How well, I won. quicker than everyone else. How I won Roubaix. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, it takes oh, about three Lord words to say. Oh, chapter would have been so short. Ah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but he then, didn't write one. And then um, um, Philip Gilbert. And, and all these amazing. So, how I won that. And it just works fabulously well in their own words. And obviously, that's just a little bit of. Um, a little bit of ghostwriting, really, but um, it just works really well, and it's a beautiful... Uh, it, it's actually something I'm immensely proud of, because the rider opens up... Obviously, you know, riders are celebrities, and they can be quite difficult and not want to... I mean, especially you, you're a celebrity, aren't you? Right it's getting bump. anything yeah. out of it at all. But, and so, uh, and, and, but if I say, you know, how did you win your greatest triumph? You'll open up and you'll give us it all and give us heart and soul and sweat and blood and the whole story. And so it's, uh, it's strangely, for a book that is, you know, a mass of statistics, fascinating statistics, it's also, um, f for writers and also, I hope, for readers, it's, it's a wonderful place uh, for me to be able to write and publish and do interesting things and to, to, to build a relationship with a rider around. And hopefully for the, for the reader, it's, it's the same thing. So it, it is, yeah, it's lists and lists and lists of every possible result that you can imagine. And yet at the same time, it's also a place for some, hopefully some cracking writing. Although that's not obviously for me to say. Obviously. Um, I mean, Rob, you're joking and saying, you know, how did I win such and such by being the fastest? But, but it's not just about the statistics. It mm. is, uh, Matt, you're saying how we hear from the riders and we always hear from the riders after they've won. And it's a, it's a sort of an unfiltered but maybe unconstructed version of how the race was. And I love being able to read a rider's written account because they've taken the time mm. to sit down and to think about it. And it just feels more more poetic, I guess, in a way. I mean, it starts, as you say, with Philippe Gil Gilbert in the winner's words, and he starts by saying, if I could have done, I would have stayed for 30 minutes under the water. I was told that I was the first winner of Pai Roubaix to go into the famous showers for a long, long time. It had been many, many years. I told the photographers, look, I know it's an historic moment, and you have to capture this, but then please leave. I was exhausted. I was empty. I was cold. It was the kind of cold that goes into you, you know? I was really shaking. And that's not the kind of thing that you get when he's just crossed the line. Stats, stats don't give you that, do they? They don't. They, they, they show you the result, but they don't show you how the result was actually, how it's happened. How and how it gets into their bones, you know? It, exactly. And, and the thing is, with you, like I, I've used the book a lot with, with my commentary. Mm -hmm. And you can look at who won, but then it's, well, hold on a minute. How exactly did it happen last year if, if you're trying to, to replicate or foresee potential, potential victories and from riders... From, from, from this year in the race. And, and the stats don't always give that away, unfortunately. I, but you do use the stats, don't you? I mean, this, this has been a tool for you, I guess, in commentary this year. A little bit of a cheat, me. <laughs> yeah. well, well, the, the <laughs> thing is, we're supposed to know, as a com or co-commentator, mm. um, you need to know the stats, obviously. And so what I do normally, th this year especially, before, before I go to a race, I'll flick to the pages and I'll take a little screen grab, <laughs> because you get to a commentary position and you cannot always rely on getting, getting Wi-Fi or getting a mm. signal. And that is something that... Or getting that, any sense out of me. Or getting any <laughs> sense out of you. Well, yeah. well, I mean, I'd never go in <laughs> thinking that that's going to happen. <laughs> but you can always go back and just look, OK, what happened last year? OK, the stages might not always be the same, obviously. I didn't bother, actually, with the Giro this year. I was there for RCS doing World Feed. I actually wrote the Giro last year. <laughs> I wasn't asked back this year to No, 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 I, 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 I did that, Rob. Yes. Don't worry, mate. It's, it's tough, isn't it, doing a Grand oh. Tour? Go on, it on is. On top of a Grand Tour. I know, it is, it is. But, you know, yeah. so I use it in, in that respect. So you, you get, like you say, you get all the intricate bits as well. Mm. And then you've got to try and piece that together and, and use, use my, my, my really good English, like what <laughs> I do, to actually get that across. But that's the beautiful thing about statistics. They mm. are bold facts, and that's all they have to be. But you can weave whatever narrative out of the different statistics that you choose, and you can, mm. you can pick different bits and discover new stories, if you like, discover new narratives. Mm. Uh, Matt, you wanted to run through a little oh, bit yeah. of a, a PowerPoint here, didn't you? Yeah, well, look, there's stage 18 of the Tour de France, and this is what you get in the book, and this is what we're, we're giving you. And the, um, 
It's funny, you know, there's, there's, you've got your trivia as well, your account of uh, the stage, and uh, often these accounts, I mean, uh, I, I, I did some of them, there's a bunch of us that do it, and um, there are, quite often, I mean, there are some beautiful stories told in these little paragraphs. There's the breakaway, and as a commentator and as a fan, um, in a sense, yeah, the headline story is the general classification, but quite rightly, the breakaway is above GC in the, in the layout because what you need to, that's what you need to remember. And but that's, that's what reminds you, that's the story, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it could be a nightmare as well. Sorry, in, in commentary, when you, when you get a break, oh. so, so we'll be watching the monitor and then all of a sudden you'll have six guys go up the road and mm. then another six. Mm. And you're looking and you're trying to picture the riders and say, right, who is that rider? Which is easier said than done. It's all right when you're sat at home with your cup of tea and you're a nice big monitor. <laughs> we're, we're in there. And then you're listening to race radio. Seb was on earlier, Seb PK, who does race radio for, for ASO. So you're trying to listen to him. Mm. So you'll be chuntering on the oh. whatever. And then I'm yeah. trying, to, tr trying to listen to get the race numbers. And before you know it, you've got 20 guys in a break and you're just going, well... It's, I do don't you know. know. You just guess in half the time. But one of the thing about cycling is that 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 breakaway formation moment there is for everyone, not just for us in the commentary booth, but also in the team cars and in the peloton. There is this structural moment in cycling that I I, I struggle to think of it that it exists in any other sport, not even horse racing. Um, where, because, you know, they're well, wearing the different layers, colours. The layers of oh. stuff that we've got to cover. And, and I want to commentate on but snooker. But there is this moment where, <laughs> well, wouldn't you, there's two well, of them. He's going for the, yeah, he's yeah. going for the, yeah. oh, no, he's gone for the blue. <laughs> and that's the thing that happens in, in bike racing. And it, but in cycling, you have yeah, that moment, don't you, where you, oh, wouldn't it? God, blimey, a cycling commentator commentating on snooker. <laughs> yeah. blimey. But there's this moment where no one knows who these guys are. And then including it transpires, us. including us. Well, what, what's beautiful about it is the statistics, um, mm. but peppered in with, with the stories. And I feel like it's the kind of book that you would just reach off the shelf if you, if you have 10 minutes to yourself and a, and a, and a quiet window mm. in the day and think, I don't particularly want to research anything. And I was talking about this in the, on the tube on the way here. The internet is a wonderful tool to research something specific. Mm. But sometimes you just want to let your brain listen a little bit. To, you browse, just to, to browse. To browse and just have a look. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be anything that's necessarily mm. informing something that you're looking for, but just a little bit of mm. dipping into the, the cycling year is quite lovely. Let's see what we have there. There we are, Giro Rosa. So we're also looking, obviously, at the, at the women's World Tour events, at the elite women's World Tour events. Um, and there we are, the same thing, the weather, the GC, the stage results, and an account of the stage. So, um, so we're... Uh, so we're across the women's racing, and I think we're also, I think we've got here um, the men's national road series from uh, the UK, so we're covering GB cycling as well. Um, there was no profile of that race. There was no, well, there was no well, profile. What? There it wasn't. Was, it was held in two dimensions, that race. That's why I showed <laughs> it, because it's <laughs> totally unique. And there we are, uh, rider profiles as well. Oh, kiss a desk coming up here after Cecilia. Okay, isn't it? yeah, I mean, yeah, what yeah. A, what, a, what a presence that is. Um, there we are. And um, obituaries as well, which in a sport that's as old as ours. Um, and we were, we were in Italy. Actually, you, were, you turned up just after um, Milano Torino this year, first held in 1876. Um, and that's, that's, what our, that's how far back our sports goes. And so inevitably, you know, there are the there are the great legends of cycling and 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 dying out. And Patrick Circu, you must have known Patrick Circu. Yeah, well, he was obviously the oh, race wow. organizer. He was my manager for early in the early years when I was riding in the six days, wow. and he was the go-to man to to sort my contract. In fact, I had a job. Um, I was going to be a chimney sweep. My father, who was a pro wrestler and a chimney what? sweep, I did a day with him. Okay, and then As I got a, a call, sweep. and I can remember Patrick phoned me. He said, Rob. Zurich six next week. Yeah. Can you do it? I said, Dad, sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm not right. sweeping chimneys. So, but yeah, so, so Patrick and, and obviously the photos of, of seeing him and, and the way that he raced on, on the road and on the track and was a, a real, real gentleman. So yeah, extremely sad. A real loss. A real loss. Yeah. It's, all, it's um, all the top mm, moments of the yeah. year, really, isn't it? And, and I want to talk a little bit about how it's put together mm. because it is phenomenal. Are you finished with 
You d you're done with that bit? I don't know. No, we got. Oh, there oh. we are. Oh, look! Oh, look. I should have teed myself up a little bit better. That's there my we are. chapter. We're puffing you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, puffing yeah. You up. yeah, I did um I did a chapter. Ned asked me if I would do one on on Trek Segafredo really and women's um sports directors. Um and it was left as loose as that. Mm. Um we had uh, Georgia Bronzini and Ina um Tudenberg joining Trek Segafredo. Mm. Um and it was a, a bit of a journalistic exploration to see what the story might be. And and kind of annoyingly for me the story became what I didn't want it to be. Mm. Um, and sometimes the story just is what it is. When I spoke, when I sat down with Ina Tuttenberg and asked her why there weren't more um, female sports directors in the sport, she said, well, most women want to have babies, don't they? And that was, that was as stark as it was. That's exactly the face that I pulled as well. And it was a very difficult concept for me to get my head around in the middle of an interview. And when I went away to write it up and I thought, I don't want to write that as a story, but the more I explored it, the more I thought, well, sometimes you have to listen to the people in the sport and maybe there's a nugget of truth in that. So that chapter for me, if you, if you read it, um, was actually a very difficult one for me to write because it almost went against what I wanted the truth to be. Mm. But as a, as a mother in, in cycling with two young kids Absolutely. and I, someone who's often told, it's great that you're doing this because you're showing other people what can be done. And I think, well, I'm lying then because this isn't easy to leave your children for the yeah. length of time that I do it. And most people don't want to. Um, but yes, it was, it was quite a challenging. Some of them do. Some of them do, yeah. And sometimes I do, to be I fair. Go, I go to a race, get to the <laughs> hotel, and that's it. Curtains are drawn, and I'm... Uh, <laughs> ah. But your kids love you, obviously. I can vouch for that. I gave, I gave him a massage. Oh. I gave, you remember the it's massage? It's like, it's I gave you a massage. Yeah. We're, we're pre-watership. You're right. Shall we? Yeah, yeah. we'll wait till half past nine. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, and I think you'll find... There we are. Look, yeah. there's me. There's me. And uh, Ned asked me to... And I thought, well, are you kidding? Um, uh, some of you may know I, uh, I have a, a, a connection with Colombian cycling and obviously Egan Bernal has been the first Colombian to win the Tour de France this year. And Ned said, you know, would you write about your connection with Colombian cycling? And, and this is in the same way, if I can summarise this in one sentence, um, you in the same it. way that you have, so that no one actually <laughs> has to go to the trouble of reading it because it's pretty heavy weather. But ultimately, it was that I... Went to Columbia in 1997 and immediately made lots of fantastic friends there and became fascinated by this phenomenon of the only developing nation, um, if we can put it that way, sending world-class riders, but not just one or two, but I mean in droves to the Tour de France. And um, I thought about it and he, uh, uh, I think Ned was expecting me, and I was expecting me, in a sense, to be raving and, and you know, shaking my fists in the air in excitement at a Colombian winning the Tour de France. But ultimately, it's never been about that. Mm -hmm. And when I first came into contact with Colombia, um, 1997, 1998, well, I mean, there hardly were. There's, there was Cacaito Rodriguez, who won a stage in the, in the Giro d'Italia, wasn't there? Uh, won a stage in the Tour de France. Um, I think in 1997 there was one professional cyclist from Colombia and I wrote my first book in, uh, 19, in 2003, Kings of the Mountains, and there would have been Santiago Botero, Victor Hugo Peña, Elgato Cárdenas, ah, Ivan Parra, four professional Colombians, and they weren't winning stuff. Ivan would have been ninth in the 2000 Giro d'Italia if he hadn't broken a uh, 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 bone in his hand during that race. It was never about winning, and I've never... Ned always takes the mickey out of me for this, and it's kind of ironic that I'm in a book of... Well, actually, it's right that I should be involved in a book of statistics, because I've always been more interested in, you know, the, 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 the plucky 19-and-a-half-year-old who finished 23rd mm -hmm. than the, you know, than Chris Froome would have finished first. So anyway, it's a little bit about that. Anyway, a bit more writing, and um, I actually... I love these... I like the look of it, and I like the kind of woodcut illustrations, and, and uh, these illustrations are actually very carefully worked, and I was asked by the illustrator if I could provide them with a, a photograph or a series of photographs that would give them an impression of the landscape that they were depicting, and, and, and so a great deal of care and love um, has, has gone into that. And, and I tend to write... I suppose what you call monographs, non-fiction books, but that have a lot of me, in, uh, probably too much of me in them. Um, 
One of the things I like about this book is that it's, it, it, it is a statistical book, but I, I think it's got a lot of soul. And it's I think the soul life, is it? in the look of it and it's in the illustrations. And, and, and I think all of us who've written in it have put a bit of soul in there. It's not, you know, they're, they're not summaries of, 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 of some, the dead letters on the page. There's, there's, there's a living passion that is, is something that, for some bizarre reason, this sport, you know... Uh, brings, brings out, out of us, all. yeah. Well, it's yeah, also yeah. why the book, I think, as a whole, is, is a very representative um, snapshot of mm. the entire year because mm. there are chapters on things that are more cultural. Isn't it? You know, it is a big <laughs> snapshot. Um, but, it, but maybe snapshot's the wrong word, but I guess a, a written memory of the whole year and very mm. much in the future that you would look back and and maybe forget that this was the year that, that Colombia finally mm. came to the, yeah. the, the fore of everyone's mm. um, knowledge of the sport and, and that maybe we'll look back in a few years and think, wow, there were no female sports directors. Do you remember mm. when that was the case? And I think that it's lovely that we have the essays and, 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 and the little stories that weave through those statistics to give us an idea of exactly what place um, cycling is in at the moment. But I wanted to talk just about um, how it is compiled because it is, it is absolutely incredible. Um, and Charlotte Attia was here and, and Jonathan Marks should be here somewhere as well. And they are huge figures behind this book and the work that goes into it when you think that the last race of the season finished, how many days ago? Six? Eight. I mean, eight, eight days ago, and it's included in this book. It was, mm. they, they got the statistics together, they got it sent to the printers, they got it brought back looking like a work of beauty as it is. Um, now, Killian Kelly isn't here, but he's the man really responsible for all of these statistics, isn't he? Compiling he, them all. He's the stat man. If, if, if you're a commentator, you need to follow him on Twitter. Because if you're a fan, will, you need to follow Everyone knows Killian Kelly, yeah, at Irish Peloton. If you're in any way interested in, in statistics. Give him a follow. He will, he will give you divulge stuff that you just think, how, how, <laughs> how, have you, how many hours? He needs to get yeah. a day job. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he, he does have a day job, but this... He does now, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, he's the Pretty man much. for this. That's the thing. Mm. Um, in an age of the internet... Uh, Rob, when we can get these statistics anytime we want and we can just type into Google, what, what is the place of this? Where does this sit alongside the internet? Do you well, think? This, this is one of those things. I think in, in 30, 40, 50 years' time, when, when someone's got a big pile of these and they show them to someone and they say, well, mm -hmm. someone actually wrote this down? <laughs> and it, it, when it, like you say, when it is there on the internet, if you can get a signal, this, this, is just, this is just one of those things. I, see, now, every Friday night, there will be one tonight, I promise you, Instagram, I do a music video from my workshop. I do not download my music. I like CDs. Oh, right. Mm. So awesome. this is the sort of thing. I like to go around and I like to be able to open it up and take the CD out and put it in and out. Mm. I'm not into plugging my phone in and just blah, blah, blah. Mm. So this, for me, is mm. something that I just think, yeah. And is that the beauty of it, And I can get it, things Max? off the top shelf as well. <laughs> and it, don't want to know about your top shelf. Thank you very much. In the Rob. kitchen. <laughs> oh, God, I told um, you it was a mistake <laughs> bringing in, didn't I? Is that the beauty of this, though? Because statistics are, are a wonderful thing to mm. have out there, but collating them yeah. is another matter. And, and as I say, it's about how you draw them together that tells a story. And this, I guess, is that story. It's done it, for you. Well, it's there. there. You, 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 can, you can get the stats. You can get pro cycling stats is something that, that we use an awful yep. lot of, of for obvious reasons. But it, that doesn't tell the other story. You can find a lot of the other stories elsewhere. But then do you have to click, drag mm -hmm. and drop and stuff like that to get it all together? I don't know these things. Whereas this, you just flick through the page. And, and I, I mean, think, I mean, as you say, to, to browse mm -hmm. is something in a sense. It's very different. We, we even say internet browser, but it's precisely what you don't do on the inter internet, isn't it? And just to flick through, there's, I, I, I use my Kindle, I, 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 I use my iPad, my uh, laptop, don't have a desktop, but you know, the iPhone and everything, that the, what do you call it? The smartphone and so on and so forth. But, um, but, but just to be able to physically and I, I personally deface all of my books by underlining yeah. things. And but so I on like so that. Forth. It makes it And yours. you can take notes in the margins and so on. And I think the other thing is, um, you know, Tom Southern last year uh, writing a fabulous piece about the way in which, um, you know, riders are coming back to the bus at the end of a stage in which ostensibly nothing has happened. 
and the social media are sort of rife with, well, have I re am I ever going to get those two and a half hours mm. of life back mm, yeah, from yeah, watching yeah. that? And yet the riders are coming back to the, the bus in, 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 in that Italian gesture that everyone knows mm. in cycling, you know, absolutely, Quite having tired. been on the rivet, having been shattered <laughs> all day, and yet... Nothing's happened. Why? Well, the standard is that high, and the physical demands are, so, and everyone is on, on, on such a high level, um, having been trained with power meters, with all the, 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 um, the, the, the techniques and know how of modern sports science and so on. And just so you read that in a couple of pages, and that changes or moves on your vision of the sport that we're talking about. So I think it's also year on year, it's, it's a little gemstone with lots of different facets. It takes and you within the race. It does, That's and I think it moves on. I think that what, what we'll see is, is, as you say, as year after year, 10 years on and 15 years on and 20 years on, you'll look back at some of the writing in there and you, you look back to the first edition and say, oh, okay, you know, this is how, this is how we looked at the sport. Mm -hmm. And in 25 years' time, you'll, you'll read it and you'll have a completely different way mm -hmm. of looking at the sport. So it's a record of that. And it's, it's important in a sense because it allows you to see um, the distance you've come. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to see how the earlier version of yourself you know, looked at the sport and understood it and, and how it was reflected in, in good journalism. So last year, fittingly, we had contributions from Chris Froome, from Geraint Thomas. Mm. This year, Richard Carapaz, alongside Philippe Gilbert, Annemiek van Vluten. It's a real reflection of the people who've, who've stood out. Who are we going to have next year? Who's next year going to be the year of? We've had, certainly the men's side of the sport, we've had British dominance. Now this year, it's South American, and very much the young riders. Prediction time. Who's going to be in uh, the road book next year? Who will we be talking about? One, one of my favourite riders and one of my favourite races, actually, that, that I commentate on, the, the newly found Tour of Sicily. Mm -hmm. The weather was atrocious, but the food was superb. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon McNulty, who yep. just, uh, he's with yep. World Tour next year. He, he won that race, and, and I, re I remember him from doing the, the World's commentary um, in Qatar. And he's a rider who is absolutely superb, and I would like to hear him mm -hmm and read about, about him at some point, because he's one of those riders. If you don't know Brandon McNulty, you soon will, I tell you. He very nearly won on Hatter Dam oh, he did. Uh, last year, and he got caught with about 30 metres to go. He, he was from the break, he had a teammate in the break, and he, he ended up about 50th on the stage. He just hit the dam, and so close, yet so like taking it from all, the, from all the real boys. Do you remember, I'll tell you about that stage, one of the best, piece of, best pieces of finish line camera work I've ever seen, because the camera picked him out as you say, he came in about 50 of having been at the, at the race lead with 200 metres to go, and then it's immensely steep. It's got, and, and the finish line camera, or one of the finish line cameras, as uh, Brandon McNulty came in, picked him out and showed him to us, and that's really hard to do. You think so he's got it, he's no got it, he's got it, and then all of a sudden you just oh, see this wall of riders swamped. come around him. <laughs> Matt, what about you? Who <sighs> do you want to be reading about in next year's road book? Um... What's it going to be the year of, I guess, is the question. Like I said, we had the Brits in the Grand Tours. We had the South Americans. We what the are Slovenians. we looking at next year? Well, we had the Slovenians and Pogacar. Yeah, that, yeah, is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Um, oh, God, I'm going to have to be really predictable. And two of them is, uh, one of them, I think that uh, Ivan Ramiro Sosa is uh, already potentially the best climber in the world. And he's um, 22, round about today, or maybe next week. Mm. Um, and he's an absolute phenomenon. Sticking with the South American. And yeah, yeah, I am, I am. And also um, Sergio Andres Iguita, who won stage 18 of the Vuelta a Colombia, who's just um, not only one of the, um, the, the, the great talents, and he's been brought through a lot of the same people who, um, who brought through one of my great friends in cycling, Nardo Quintana. Mm -hmm. And he's come through the same structures with the same people, good people. And uh, as well as being a phenomenon, an absolute physical phenomenon, he's also one of the most um, wonderful, giving, thoughtful, considerate people from a very poor part of Medellin, a uh, very poor part of Medellin, very poor part of Medellin, <laughs> very poor part of Medellin um, who, when he turned up for the first training camp, with um, uh, with EF Education First at the start of the season, he uh, turned up in a pair of old 
I'm trying to look. No, no, no. Your shoes are all too good. Terrible yeah. shoes. Terrible broken at the wrong shoes. Place, Matt. Oh, look at those. Look at those. Not a pair of those. They've got a and, hole um, in the front. If he's wearing yeah. these, I'd be a bit worried. You've gone through the front there. <laughs> and, um, and the reason was he'd given his shoes to his next door neighbour because he knew that the team would give him a new pair of shoes when he got to Spain. Mm. And um, he's. Uh, God, elite sport is, is full of slightly difficult people. Sometimes, and he's not. He's wonderful, and he's a fabulous human being. So I really hope that he does. And, I, and not only do I hope, I know that he's going to be one of the big riders of the next season. Well, I imagine that's your commission mm. sorted for next year. We're going to talk hey. about that in the 2020 hey. rulebook. But the exactly. 2019 rulebook is here for you. Um, it is available to buy. Think about Christmas. Think about um, all the presents that you can be sorting out here today. Charlotte, where can people buy this? In the next room, isn't it? Buy it in yeah. the next room. In the next room, by like. the bar, there's a bookshelf on just the left in, yeah. side. Just, just next to Rob Hale's Carbon Concepts. Next to <laughs> Rob Hale's Concepts. Just off the edge there. Rob will probably sign one for is you. It? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the Roadbook 2019. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank hey. you very much, Rob. Oh. <laughs> well done. Well done. Are we going to... Um, I oh. think we're going to... Yeah, and I think, um, I, I don't know about anyone else, but if, if anyone's foolhardy enough to be interested in me scrawling over oh. a piece of paper or something, I'll be over there as well, and, and you can come and talk some sense into me. Yeah. Get a selfie, maybe even exactly. as well, make it modern. Exactly. Um, thank yeah. you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and in just a few moments, we'll have Simon Brotherton back on the stage with our first of our Innovators series, talking about um, all the products that are to come on the market and uh, how designers are thinking outside of the box. That'll be in just a few minutes.